Bobby, can you explain? Hello. Oh, wow. Can you explain Hello. what you're doing? <laughs> you're not that active in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this really cool rock here, which we'll get B-roll of later, um, that we put bolts in. And we are going to use this cool uh, map gas uh, to heat up the head. The goal being uh, to melt the glue so this can be removed. So we have left the back exposed so um, we can use an infrared thermometer to see how much uh, <laughs> this heats up. What temperature is it now? Uh, it is about 60 degrees, which I would say is the ambient temperature right now. It is, because I'm not wearing my orange jacket yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, should I touch this side while you do it? Uh, yeah, you I could. think that would be work. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Not my fingers. I have, I have infrared in my fingers. Uh, limestone's a pretty good insulator, I would say. Well, it's not so much oh, Jesus, your red light. I thought fire was coming through the rock. <laughs> yeah, you can cause more damage to the rock. It would start to look like California. <laughs> yeah, limits, limits no, I have a rock near my house. <laughs> I mean, you've heated it up 10 degrees. 10 degrees, yeah. In theory, if you did that for two hours... You get up to so 150 now, now, now degrees. Now, here's the thing, too, is you leave it to heat on all the time, or you know, you let it take it off for a while, and that heat will still kind of work its way in. Yeah, it could. Or so, you could do it on a 100-degree day and start with some momentum. So show us what you're doing there, Steve. So we've had it on for about, what, five minutes or so, heating with a torch? I would say closer to 10, 10 or 12. This has gotten up to like 600 degrees on the back side. We're up to like 120. We're starting to give up. Then I just took the pry bar and it is now at least spinning in the, in the hole. Oh man, yeah. I mean, if, if I came up to a glue-in that was doing anything like that, I would be freaked out. Yeah, so now, so once it's, once it's bonds are broken, you can start spinning it. Yeah. And then be able, should be able then. Um, you can definitely use that spinning motion. Oh, there you go. So keep in mind, this was only like an inch and a half or two of glue. It would have definitely been a very close to a full strength placement based on the testing that we've done 240 degrees uh let's move it off the carpet we're no holding the carpet sorry ryan <laughs> um this was done at the same exact time same glue um the, let me get steve struggling um yeah put some force into that see if you can get it to twist so this one was not heated up were you able to do it? The rock was starting to crack there. Then I was worried about it blowing off in my face. Okay, so you got this side hotter. It got, yeah, it, it, it got, got 115. 115, 120. Mm. So if we did this on a hot day and you're starting with like a, a warmed up well, rock. The, the back of the rock was reading up to like 170. So the rock itself was getting hot too. So okay. Yeah. And so I mean. So the heat will travel. In a real situation, you're dealing with a lot more rock. Um, but, but you're still dealing with the, that first couple inches would be affected. Yeah. I just wouldn't want to compromise that rock because that's what you're putting it back into. Right, yeah, so. Science. So this is induction heating and that's heating up your staples, probably more than it is your stainless. Stainless is floating in the two to 300 range. Well, 250. I mean, the bottom of the bolt's already up to 80. Yeah, so you heated it up 20 degrees. And that's that's gone a lot faster than the, the torch. Look at that name. I like that name. Yeah, if I could get a bolt to look like that, it'd be easy to remove. Yeah, we're... That... The... We need one of those stickers that say it may cause cancer. 
90, oh, that, that is that is good to see there. 92, yeah. So the heat is going down. Yeah. You've only been at it for maybe double that amount of time, but you know, because you didn't, you started that later. Nice that the rock is not getting that same heat that the fire does. Yeah. Yeah, that is glowing red. Interesting. If you take a big bar, you uh, you risk breaking the weld, right? Just warm it, but I mean, it's just like- It's not much. 400 degrees. So can that heat transfer through over the next couple of minutes before it cools yeah. down? So this is the next day after we burnt these. Uh, this was the one that we used the map gas on and this was the induction heating. And we could not get this out. We didn't go as long. We didn't go as long, but the rock was not heated up. And I think right. that had some effect because it's not just the heat of the metal, but the heat of the rock. But the induction heating doesn't burn the rock up quite like this does. I don't know if that cleans up right now, but I don't know if I'd want to leave that kind of scarring just so I could reuse the hole. Now, if we're trying to replace gluins, the whole point of this method is to reuse the same hole so we don't turn our rocks into Swiss cheese. But if we're causing all sorts of damage or spalling, then I don't know if that's worth doing that. So I think what we, we do on here is we weren't really careful, we were hitting the flame going straight down, hitting the rock. So you do a heat shield, like a fiberglass map, like for pl plumbers like use. Plumbers use, okay. You put that on there and then just really focus the, the, the flame on the bolt. And, and just like that much around on the rock. On the rock, yeah. yeah. So you could try flame yeah. and then a bar that would, in a vertical situation, I don't think this is as useful. 10 minutes no. with a flame Hang, you know, on, hanging while with a plumber's not, setup. Yeah. I mean, it. people weld on rope. I mean, there's, right. we have buildings. But yeah. but yeah, I just don't see this as a realistic thing. And then you have fire risk, right? If, uh, I mean, the whole country seems to be burning down, the whole world does. So I wouldn't want to do this unless it's like wet outside. Right. Um, and then the induction, you need a sort power source. I mean, you'd be yeah, you would need a, a generator. Bring in a generator and extension cord. So that, that's very limiting. This is mostly limiting. There's uh, lots of, a uh, lot more cons and pros. The whole reason we're discussing this is if bolts just accidentally get smashed by hammers that walk by, uh, they need to be replaced. If people didn't do that, they'd probably be good for one or 200 years. And by then we'll be like on Mars and Jupiter, and this would not be a problem. It'd be very easy to solve. When glue and bolts get smashed, basically the best solution we have at this point is to cut it off and put a hole right next to it and let the the P shape or the bell shape in this case cover up the other hole because there's something in the other hole that rod and the glue and if you if it's all glued in together and we did a whole video test where we did like punched in a hole and then did another one and it came out in those tests just fine yeah it definitely definitely would mark it up now, yeah. over time, it might not be such a big deal, but I wouldn't want my crag or my highline stuff looking like this. Back to the vertical scenario, I'm thinking in context of horizontal, where top of a cliff, we have either anchors for climbing or anchors for highlining. And this is usually where they're getting smashed, where they're conveniently located for people to access. Whereas this is just a lot more difficult. And usually people are using them when they're getting smashed in that case. What's the conclusion? Don't smash bolts. Yeah, don't smash bolts because it's a it's a pain to get them yeah. fixed up. Yeah, if you don't like bolts in an area, well, cutting them off cleanly and leaving less trace is is the solution if you're gonna be a dick. Uh, smashing them makes you an asshole. So don't do that. But this was a test we've been meaning to do for a while to see if we can solve some problems we currently have. I don't think this is the solution for that. I think it was worth sharing in this video. Sounds good. Cheers.